As a Christian female in the fitness industry, I've seen so many women frustrated as they search for transformation through diets and exercise alone. And what I've realized is that God's Word, the most important part of this life for a Christian, seems to be the portion that's always missing from what we're being taught about being fit and healthy. Courageous Fit Female is a podcast for women who love Jesus and want to get fit and healthy His way. Want to seek His truth versus what the world says? Then let's get into today's show. So most of you know that back in 2015, when I gave my life, I gave my whole heart to Jesus and he transformed my life, he transformed my marriage, he allowed me to have this hunger and new prescription lenses, new a new outlook, a new perspective on life and health and everything. Fast forward to today, right? My whole life has been transformed from the inside out and it was all because of how Christ has given me a new outlook on how to steward different things in my life. So this episode or this podcast rather is all about how to get fit and find body freedom God's way. And going through this life as a Christian from 2015 to today, I have seen and I have had conversations and I have had different opportunities with women and also males that are Christians, right? My brothers and sisters in Christ who I have had conversations with And I've even interviewed some of them personally on a one-to-one basis. And there's one thing that I notice when it comes to having a conversation about weight loss and conversation about fitness and all the rest. And the highlight of the conversation was always about how they needed to get fit. They needed to get healthy. They needed to X, Y, Z. They needed to lose weight. They needed to reshape their body. Like all these things, right? All these statements that pretty much was the same thing. And it all had to do with changing their outsides, changing their physical body. And at the end of their stories, it was always going back to the desire that they had. Now, this episode is going to be all about the one thing that we need to establish. I'm talking to Christians here, right? Those who fear God. The one thing that they need to establish first before jumping into another fitness program, another fitness challenge, another, you know, drinking the next drinking the next diet shake, whatever it is, dealing with health, the next trend, the next popular thing, right? Because we see all these things being posted on social media. And there's one thing that we need to establish first before diving in and committing to that. And where this is all coming from is this knowledge now and because they say hindsight is 2020 right and now I can see that as a Christian all these things that I'm going to talk about today are things that I have experienced and I want to get this through your earbuds because it is super essential as a Jesus lover that is trying to get fit and healthy and to find body freedom God's way that we establish first and foremost getting to know Jesus, to seek after him first and foremost. Because if we decide to do all the things with fitness, do all the things with weight loss and the, and the shakes and all the rest, I'm going to tell you how that looks like. And you tell me whether or not you resonate, okay? So this is what happens. You hear about a product or a fitness challenge or a weight loss challenge or a detox or something of that nature, right? You hear about your friend doing it or you see a post about it. And what happens is you put your hope in that diet, in that program, in that challenge, in that person even, right? The person that is promoting this, whatever it is, insert the blank, And you did the advice of that person or you did whatever you needed to do, X, Y, Z, in that challenge program, etc. And your willpower ran out, right? It ran out, then you became discouraged, then there's comparinitis, and then you felt hopeless because you felt like you were going round and round. And it seemed like you were just going backwards instead of going forwards and going towards your goal. And all the while, everyone else that you saw, it seemed as if they were going further and further and you were just standing in place, if not going backwards, right? And I am telling you, this is probably the most commonly made mistake that I see in us Christians. And that's including myself, right? And that's what this episode is all about, is what was missing. So we started off with this desire, right? This thought of, quote unquote, if only right? If only I can look like her or whoever it is, that's the first thing. That's the first 
kind of sort of image or seed or desire, right? That was planted in our thoughts. And then it goes on to, I'm going to do an online search. I'm going to check out what is out there about losing weight and getting skinnier and getting more tone, getting rid of my cellulite, right? How do I progress in my exercise? How do I get motivated? How do I go about eating you know, in such a way that there's going to be less calories and how do I do all the meal plans? And then from the online searches, you get motivated, you get inspired, then you sign up for a gym, you, you're all gung-ho about it. There are changes that happen in your life from your routines, what time you get up in the morning, what time you go to sleep, maybe even um, your friends, what kind of friends you hang out with, your music, maybe you even have a playlist that's different from when before you started in this new journey. Your language is different. Your thoughts are different. Like even the people who you subscribe to on YouTube and podcasts are different as well as the people who you subscribe for emails. Also, the way you dress becomes different because you start to see that your body's changing differently, right? And guys, this is my story, okay? So this is not everyone's story, but if you are listening and you're still listening, maybe you know someone that went through the same journey that I did as far as finding the results, the physical results, and then going into this next phase of, okay, I'm a new person, right? Sadly for me and for many others, I started treating other people differently because the way that my body was shaped, like maybe I wasn't showing it out outwardly, but in my heart, right? And in my thoughts, in my mind, I had different thoughts about people. Like I was really putting myself up there over other people because of the way that I looked. So yeah, I treated other people differently. There were even specific words that I used, right? My language was changing and I started to do things and participate in things that I didn't participate before I looked different. And I was definitely on this road to, I want to stay here where I'm at because this is what I need to do to gain others approval. And then about 90 days in, about three months in, maybe 30 days for some of you, right? 30 to 90 days in and you're doing all the things, and then you have either, everyone's different, so you either had none of your results that you wanted, little results, or maybe, like in my situation, I didn't have enough results. Like it wasn't enough physical transformation for me, and it actually is more work to maintain the level that you got to and thinking about all the things that you need to do to maintain it, that there is really a lot of work that goes into it. There's a lot of commitment. It's a whole different level of commitment. So I, for me, I kept doing more and searching for quote unquote, the body. And it was funny because so many other people that I was around, they were saying that they wish they had my body and I look so good for my age and all the things, all the things. And all of that work maintaining this physical body, right? It produced something, it produced fruit, but it produced a wrong kind of fruit, not the kind of fruit that would make an impact on the kingdom. But for me, it was like, hey, I want the label. I like the reputation. You know, when people make different comments to me, this word beast was a popular thing in the fitness industry at that time where If you were called a beast, it means that you were determined, you were dedicated, you knew what you were doing, you were super awesome, right? And it just sounds so silly, but I wanted that reputation. I wanted to keep that label. And granted, during that, this whole thing that I'm explaining to you, I was not yet a Christian, okay? But that was between 2012 to 2015. But 2015 in February, when I gave my life to Christ, And everything started to shift for me, right? I did all the other things. I left the gym. I joined an insurance company. I did all the things in life, all the other things that came along with life other than fitness. Slowly started to put on the weight, right? Started to exercise less because I was more, you know, making work more a priority and started to, you know, make up for all the quote unquote lost time, right? As if we can truly make up for lost time, which is not really true because we can never get back time. But in that time frame where I was putting a lot of energy in work, I was also putting a lot of dedication to getting to know my family, you know, with my marriage, really trying to refine my marriage, the Lord doing a great work in there, um, getting back to restoring the relationship that I didn't have anymore with my two kids and on and on. And so I started to put exercise less on my priority list and put my family and relationships more 
on my priority list and going to Bible studies and going to church and helping out being a part of all these different ministries. And fast forward to today, I've had so many countless of conversations with brothers and sisters in Christ and the conversation when it comes to fitness, because that's what they think of talking about for the most part when they see me right outside of church or when they don't talk about things of God. And it was always about the same thing, right? Like I met my PR or I broke my PR or I need to lose weight or I'm too fat or I need to get you know, into a better shape, I'm out of shape, all these, these comments that we hear from everyone, right? Like, this is just a common thing that we hear. It doesn't matter if you're Christian or not. These, these are things that we hear, right? And these are also statements and comments that I would hear from my personal clients who they wanted more, they desired to change the shape of their body, and they were willing to even sacrifice family and sacrifice time and even sacrifice their own body itself. If they were having injuries, they were willing to pretend that they didn't have any injuries and try to push through that just for the sake of trying to look a certain way. They were still on this search for, is there a pill? Is there a shake? Is there a book? Is there an author to help me with basically, right? Being discontent in this physical body that I'm in because I just keep putting on the weight and I've put on 20 pounds in the last three months, in the last six months. And, and those of you listening are probably relating to this because during this pandemic, we are moving less, right? And hopefully you guys are finding creative ways to actually move a little bit more. But the point of the matter in this entire episode is I want you to ask yourself this question. And that question is, have we forgotten who to put our trust in? Because we know that the Lord never changes. He pours continual grace into our lives daily and hourly and gives mercy that we don't deserve, right? All the time, it will never end. And he keeps his promises. He is faithful to the end. But we choose to put our hope in the way that we look, to try to get to a certain look or a certain number on the scale or to be able to fit into a certain pair of jeans. And I will never stop clarifying this. I'm not saying that we shouldn't steward our bodies. I'm not saying we shouldn't drink more water and drink less soda. I, I'm not saying you shouldn't cut out sugar. Yes, cut sugar out. It's great for your body. And I'm not saying that you shouldn't join a gym. You shouldn't participate in classes. I'm not saying that you shouldn't hire a coach or a personal trainer. And some of you have emailed me telling you that, telling me that you have hired personal trainers and now listening to Courageous for Female, the Holy Spirit is giving you a different outlook on fitness and weight loss, which is super awesome. What an impact and a win for the kingdom. So that's super cool how God is using these episodes to speak to you women through this microphone. So that's super, super, super awesome. We know that all the physical things that they are good. They also contribute. This is according to Weight Loss That Works, Wellness That Works. It's a website and there's research that shows that when you do those healthy things, that it also contributes to somewhat improved mental health. So that's a good thing. But as Christians, as lovers of Jesus, as fearers of God, as ambassadors of Christ, we need to remember 1 Timothy 4, 8. And that is Repeat after me, for bodily exercise profits a little, but godliness is profitable for all things, having promise of the life that now is and of that which is to come. Another translation says physical training is good, but training for godliness is much better, promising benefits in this life and in the life to come. So yes, we need to remember 1 Timothy 4, 8, that doing all these things are great. Yes, steward your body for the kingdom and to impact the kingdom and to, to keep our bodies in tune with how God really designed us, right? To eat the healthy foods, the foods that he created. He designed it that way so that we don't have to get sick sooner. Now, will we get sick even if we eat a supreme, super good diet full of veggies? Yes, we're still going to get sick. Are we going to die if we eat all the foods that are super good? Yes, you're still going to die. We have an expiration date and God knows when that is, but it doesn't mean that we shouldn't steward our bodies. So do all of those things, but we need to remember who to put our trust in. That is something that I forgot about. Like I basically put God in a box 
and separated him from all the other things in my life when it came to fitness specifically, we know that there are still going to be problems even if our health is super perfect, right? Super, super good. If we honor all the things that we learned about health, right? There are still problems even beneath the surface because it is in our hearts. We can't see it, but our motives and our thoughts and our desires, if we're not careful to censor and fix our eyes on Jesus, it's really going to be easy to push his ways and his instructions for living on this side of heaven and where and how to find true joy and contentment and beauty. And eventually what happens is we tune him out of all the aspects of our lives. I remember a study that we did with the middle schoolers a couple years ago, and it was giving an example about putting God as a file, like making him just a file, like think of a filing cabinet, right? And God is just one of the files. And then you have a file for sports, you have a file for hobbies, you have a file for me time, you have a file for marriage, and then God has its own file, his own file. But that shouldn't be that way. God should be the entire filing cabinet, right? He's the one that holds everything, all these different pieces of life. But that's how I was doing it. I was putting God in his own file or in a file separately from health and I never included him. And the thing is, is that when we choose to place our expectations on outward fruit, right? The things like how we look, the numbers on the scale, our body shape, the before and afters, others approval, worldly success, all of that is fleeting. And that is why establishing a firm foundation with Christ Knowing the Lord through diving into scripture and finding daily gratitude in all the different things that he's placed in your life. Having gratitude in the relationships that he's given you, that he's given you as gifts. You know, having gratitude about the body parts that are still able to function and being given the role of a mom, of a daughter, etc. Having eyes that are working so that we can see our friends and our our husbands and and we're able to see the fluffy clouds and and having running water for goodness sake right i mean our water went out the other day on sunday we had to skip church because we had no water to get ready for church and we had you know breakfast lunch and when it almost came to time to dinner finally my husband was able to re- repair the actual plumbing issue in the shower and i looked back at all the dishes and i was like wow Water is super, super essential. It's super important that we have that. And to even just to be grateful for the water that we have, that we can shower with clean water. We, we open our fridges and we have water in a pitcher. Gosh, if God gave you a voice to sing, then be grateful for that voice, that gift of being able to sing. I love praise and worship music, but I can't sing for the life of me. And But I'm going to sing anyways, right? But being grateful for all these things, for being able to comprehend what the meaning of the lyrics are in the praise song. I mean, the list goes on, but we need to acknowledge that life is fleeting and is it really worth it? Okay, is it really worth it doing all the things to try and make your waist smaller and putting all the trendy body shapes first while losing out on our chance to grow internally inside of our hearts, to grow inwardly, and having our minds closer to and walking towards all the good things, all the promises, the mercy, the grace, the love that Jesus has for us as we seek him first and foremost. And I don't know about all of you listening, but I know for me, there is a small part that it's really hard to hear that because sometimes I do find myself struggling that I want the physical, right? I want that physical outward look, right? And then the Holy Spirit grounds me and reminds me that what are all the ways that I am impacting my family and people on this podcast, you women listening, how else am I impacting the people at my church, strangers out when I go shopping and I say, you know, share the gospel with them or whatever it is. But it is hard to hear that life is fleeting and like, trying to look better and get a smaller waist and do all those things. Like those are fleeting things. And the thing is, is that none of us seek after God, right? And we know that it says that all over scripture in Psalms, in Romans, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Zephaniah, in Hosea, in the book of John, 
all these different parts of scripture, they repeat itself. And there's a reason why God wants us to know that is because he wants to remind us that we need to lean on him. We need to go hard after Jesus. We need to seek after the beauty of God. We need to pray and ask the Lord to keep you humble. Ask him for his wisdom to take the next step or to not take the next step. What should you do when it comes to another fitness challenge, another diet shake, another trend, another thing, another blah, 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 blah. All these different things, right? And isn't that just the job of Satan is to confuse you, to bombard you, to put all these distractions, anything that he can do to get you away from God and God's glory and God's peace and God's love. That's just the way he works. So the whole point of this podcast, ladies, is to think about, have you established, and let's walk towards, if not, establishing faith in Jesus before fitness, before weight loss plans, before all of that, and establishing a firm foundation in Jesus and diving into scripture and praying and getting close to other brothers and sisters seeing how you can serve one another, right? Those things, having that kind of mind and heart and mission. And and I'm not trying to decorate anything because I'm not saying I'm doing all those things. Like there are days where I don't want to do anything and I get that. I understand if you're like, Jacqueline, that's a lot of stuff you're telling us to do. Ministry and serving and blah, 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 all these things. Like I have so much to do. I get it, okay? But let's start with just your heart, right? Asking God to refurbish it so you can be established in Jesus, establish that faith, have a firm foundation first before you go all in to the next fitness challenge, fitness program, uh, weight loss shake, whatever it is, weight loss plan. So I'm going to recap. There are about eight things here that I want to recap to you to establish your faith in Jesus before joining all these other things. Number one, allow God to rule and reign and guide your heart and your mind and your soul when you're making habits, when you're making all these fitness things a priority in your life, okay? Allow him to rule and reign. And that means you're not going to keep him in one file, right? I'm not going to keep him in one file. I'm going to have him be the entire filing cabinet. And another way to explain this is to think of a tire or a hubcap that has spokes inside of it and the center, all the different metal pieces joining at the center. So if God is the center, right? If we make him the center of everything, all those little spokes going out to the edge of the rim, those are all different parts of our life, our fitness, our family, our marriage, our health, our work, our dwelling, our personal life, our motherhood, all each and every one of them are spokes, but everything touches the center, which is Christ, right? So That's number one, is to allow God to rule and reign and guide your heart. Number two, ask God to remind you about 1 Timothy 4.8. And 1 Timothy 4.8 is physical training is good, but training for godliness is much better, promising benefits in this life and in the life to come. Number three, remember Jesus will never let you down like a diet will because he is a promise keeper and that brings so much peace. Number four, write a daily gratitude. I didn't mention this in the episode, but this can be a little tiny homework task that you can do every single day. I've mentioned this on another episode. Just designate a specific notebook where you just write one daily gratitude, one sentence every single day. Keep track of that. And at the end of the year, you can look back before 2023 rolls around if Jesus doesn't return yet, right? And see all the different things that he has done in your life, how he's answered prayers or how he's answered prayers in a different way that you prayed for. Or when you're feeling discouraged, you can always look back in the middle of the year and see all the different things that God has answered. So write a daily gratitude. Number five, acknowledge, reset. Number five, ladies, acknowledge that life is fleeting. Okay, it is not eternal. Number six, steward your body, your health, for the kingdom and go hard, go hard after Jesus. Number seven, practice seeking after the beauty of the Lord. Learn how to take pleasure in the beauty of God and let that capture your heart. Number eight, ask the Lord to keep you humble and for his wisdom every single day regarding weight loss and fitness and all of that health stuff. And I do want to close off with Psalm 27, 4. And that is one thing I have desired of the Lord that will I seek 
that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. Another translation says, the one thing I ask of the Lord, the thing I seek most is to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, delighting in the Lord's perfections and meditating in his temple. So let me pray for you ladies using that verse. Heavenly Father, thank you for allowing me to use this platform so that I can reach women for your kingdom to impact those that you are calling closer and closer to you, Lord, because we know that we are easily distracted and we constantly need to repent, turn around and look towards your face to seek your face. And Lord, I pray that everyone listening, that the one thing that they would seek the most in their lives is to seek you, Lord is to live in your house all the days of their life, Lord. Not all the other houses, Lord, that seem fun and gratifying. Lord, no, your house, because we delight in your perfection and we want to continue meditating in your temple. So give us that hunger, give us that craving, help us to be satisfied in those eternal things that make a difference and an impact for your kingdom. I lift all these up to you in Jesus' name I pray, amen. All right, ladies, so I hope and pray that this was a blessing to you. It was a little bit longer than usual because I know how important it is as a lover of Christ, how easy it is to get sucked into and conform to everything else that we see on social media and online. And it's easy to get distracted and think that there's one way to look, right? Or or to, to go about fitness and weight loss. But there's really one way to do it. And that's God's way as lovers of Christ. So if you have any questions, maybe you're in a fitness program and you just feel like you are conforming and you just don't know how to take the next step in that fitness program, maybe you need accountability, maybe you need guidance. That's what I'm here for. I do one-on-one coaching. Email me at Jacqueline at CourageousFitFemale.com and I will help you to get set up for our first coaching session or just email me if you have any questions. All right, I'll see you on the next episode, ladies. For his honor and for his glory, stay courageous and fit.